Howdy everybody, it's Rabbit Goalie here, and I am going to do a video, a tutorial on how to build this. I have built this in uh, vanilla. I wanted to build this in vanilla, and I'm glad that I did, because there's a couple of things you got to watch out for when building this using lecterns. Uh, if you were using some other way to provide a signal to these to these circuits, then you wouldn't have to worry about it, but using a lectern, you got to be a little careful. So, anyway... Uh, I would have put this out sooner, but I was playing around with the design. Uh, I built this. I'm really not impressed with it. This puts out about 120 iron per hour. Not Well, I'm being conservative with these numbers. It probably puts out a little bit more than that, but this isn't all that great. Uh, all the villagers are asleep. But, uh, yeah, it's not all that great. As of the recording of this video... Um, Il Mango has put out a video on his iron farm, which, of course, you would expect it to be much better than this, and it is. It will produce 500 iron per hour. So if you really need a lot of iron, uh, you should go check out his video on this, uh, on, a, on a farm like this. But this, this farm, the only reason that I could recommend building this farm is it's a little lighter on the resources for the redstone, and... It doesn't rely solely on the panicking of the villagers by the zombie to produce iron. Um, I don't know for certain that El Mango's design wouldn't work without panicking the, uh, the villagers. But this will produce iron even without the redstone circuit at all or the, vill or the uh, zombie. So you don't need this in place when you first build this. Uh, to start getting some iron because of course you're using a piston and if you don't have any iron like me if you're playing a skyblock and you don't have any iron or access to any iron then making this piston could be pretty hard but this this village could kickstart that I've done a little bit of testing as well just to make sure here is the results in ten, this is just 10 minutes for each one of these tests so it's not an exhaustive test but uh, no zombie without a bell. The bell is important. Yeah, it's pretty garbage in 10 minutes. Now you'll get, that's one daylight cycle, 10 minutes. So you'd get three of these um, in an hour if you were AFK. So multiply these numbers by three to give you an idea. Like if you AFK for an hour, how much would you get? So there's 20 ingots there with a bell, no zombie. You can read. With a zombie, with a bell. That's the best, obviously. That's the whole system working. And here is with a zombie without the bell. Because some people were thinking that it didn't need a bell or it couldn't use a bell. That isn't correct. Um, it does use a bell. And I will uh, insert a screenshot from my world right here. As you can see, the villagers were gathering around the bell. That happens every single day. They do gather. They do gossip. I did notice uh, in my Skyblock world that I'm that I'm playing through uh, the test world that I have that uh, they do gather around the bell. So if you can put the bell in there, absolutely put the bell in there. Um, where is the bell? I must have. Oh, I broke the bell because I I disabled this whole thing. Anyway, so let's move on to the actual building of this thing. Okay, guys, I think I'm ready to do this. Here is my inventory. You can uh, pause the video and take a look at that. All the redstone and beds and everything are counted out correctly. The glass blocks and the smooth stone is not... Uh, you don't have to use smooth stone. You can use cobblestone for everything. Um, you don't have to use smooth stone slabs. You will need two buckets of water at least. Uh, but everything else is counted out. So let's get started. The the catch basin, the catch platform, is 19 by 19, not counting the walls. So we need to go out 9, 2, 4, 6, 7, 8, 9, in both directions, or in all four directions. And then fill that in. Okay, so there's our 19 by 19 platform. This is where the golems are going to fall, and then they will go into this opening. I'm going to leave that smooth stone there, because we're going to uh, pillar up from there. Uh, and then you will do um, 
two high walls all the way around with a uh, slab on top so that the golems can't spawn there. All right, there's our catch basin, and we will put the water in, but we're not going to do that yet. What we want to do next is go up to where the villagers are going to be. So that's going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then you want to set your your glass blocks at ten. So go up nine from this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine put your glass block there and you're going to build a 5x5 five five to put your villagers in okay now this has this uh, this is gonna be your village basically and these have uh, three block high walls but you want to put your um, whatever job block you're gonna be using I'm using barrels because they're really cheap um, so you know it doesn't really matter just don't mix the job blocks it doesn't really make any difference you're not coming over here to trade with them so it doesn't really make a difference one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve you only need twelve I suppose you could put more in leave leave one side open you don't want to put job site blocks on this side I mean you could put a few but I, I wouldn't bother next we go up the next level okay so this is the side that we're gonna have our zombie and the zombie needs to have line of sight to them and you wanna leave three blocks open cuz he's gonna stand right here and look at them and scare them okay so leave that open let's put that back up there we don't need these now we put our bell right in the middle again pretty important it's not mandatory but uh, your your results are going to suffer if you don't. So then you just put your 12 beds in here like this, basically lining the entire floor with them. Next, we want to build the catch basin for the zombie. Now I'm going to use white stained glass for this, uh, just to you know, just to make it stand out a little bit more. You don't have to. You can use any any type of glass I would definitely use glass don't use something else uh, because uh, the golems can spawn on top of a lot of different blocks so if you use glass you'll be okay okay so you do a one block opening for him to stand in so just surround him like that three blocks tall and now again for demonstrating purposes only I'm gonna use uh, blue stained glass you don't have to use blue stained glass again you can use clear glass this is where the zombie is actually going to stand on you. You do need to use glass. Again, uh, the golems can spawn on a lot of different blocks, so you want to use glass just to make sure uh, that they can't spawn. Okay, I'm going to move on to this top platform here, uh, and then I'll cover all this stuff down here. This stuff down here is pretty easy. Uh, the killing chamber and putting the water in the catch basin and everything. Um, so I'm going to move on to this. Now you may want to move your villagers in here at this point before you put the catch basin in. Whatever's easiest for you. I don't know how you're moving your villagers in. Um, this may be the, the best time for you to do it. Uh, move them in here and then let them all spawn first. Get all 12 of them in there first. So I'm going to spawn these guys in here. Um, they're a pain in the butt. I hate listening to them so I've got them turned down. One. 11 and 12 get all 12 of them in there and then you can build your platform up so going from the center you go up two so they have the space and then up here is where your platform is going to be I'm only using smooth stone in the center of this platform so that I know right where the center is and I don't have to count because I, I you know I don't want to do that so you just go out seven blocks from each side here one two three four five six seven all the way around like that just like that seven blocks out from each side of this smooth stone block and then you want to build this on a diagonal just like that and then fill in the rest of it of course and there's our spawning platform now what we're doing is we're taking advantage of the way that water spreads out of course so that we only need one bucket 
of water because when I built this, I only had like one or two buckets for everything. I didn't have any iron. I didn't have any access to any buckets because again, I designed all this for a void, uh, for a, uh, um, a sky block. So you want to go up one block because this is where you're placing your water and place a glass block again so that the uh, golems can't spawn here because what they can do is they will spawn right here where this water is going to be and this water doesn't flow so they'll just sit there so go up one block place your glass remove the temporary block and put your water in place now with the villagers in here and this set this farm is actually going to function just as it is it will work just like this you won't need a zombie in here although you're going to want to put one in there of course uh, and you will get golems spawning. And of course, they're not spawning yet, but uh, it will work much better and much, much faster with the zombie. But you can get go um, iron from this farm just like this. And that's really the only uh, recommending feature of this, uh, this farm. Otherwise, I would totally just build Il Mango's farm. So once you've got golems spawning they'll get pushed off of here of course fall down here and this is where we got to collect them naturally so you put water in the four corners one block up from the from the floor right here and then when you're filling this in see how the water spreads so you skip this block and then you go here and then you just run water all the way down to the same block on the other side so you're coming out from the corner skip this block put water here and all the way down okay so now you'll have your iron golem spawning up here once these guys decide to start spawning them anyway they'll fall down here and now we got to do something with them. so you want to build a little catch basin uh, a killing chamber for them so you go down four blocks one two three four and build a uh, three block wide wall for each side of this uh, this hole here. Okay, I realized that I've left a couple of very important things out when I showed you my inventory of what you were gonna need. You're obviously gonna need some redstone and you're gonna need nine signs. I'm gonna put a full list of materials that you're gonna need to build this, including how much cobblestone and everything. I'll put that in the description. Sorry, this is my first tutorial, so I'm, I'm new to this. So you want to place these signs one block up from the bottom. So right here. All the way across like that. Because this is where we're going to put our lava. And it doesn't matter whether you put it right in the center or in one of the corners. One of the corners is going to be easiest for you because you're going to be doing this from underneath. And it doesn't matter that this block is going to be here because golems are bigger than one block, so no matter where they fall, you will get them. And then down here, you can put any you know any type of um, catch device that you want. You could do some uh, you know some hoppers, but if like me you didn't have the iron, because I didn't have any iron, what you could do is just do a small platform with this hole in the middle because again golems are bigger than one block so they won't fall down this they will get killed you can build a little platform underneath you to stand here because this is what I did I AFK'd right here of course I had a much bigger platform uh, and as they died I would get their iron some of their iron anyway some of it would get would despawn anyway you can get iron just like that to make the hoppers here so when you have the iron you can do something like that and put a chest right here and get the output but like I said, if you don't have any iron, you can uh, you can do the 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 three by with the hole in the middle, uh, and stand there, AFK, get some iron, and build it that way. Okay, now onto the redstone part. This is going to control the piston that's going to push the zombie up and down, and scare the villagers and increase the efficiency of this farm. It's not you know it's not going to be uh, you know super high output, but anyway. I am going to use two different colors of wool to highlight the different areas of the circuit. I watched a tutorial by Mumbo Jumbo, and he suggested doing that, and it really does help, especially if you're a beginner. 
So you're going to come down from this block that the zombie's going to stand on. You're going to come down two, break that block, because that's just temporary, because that's where your piston's going to go. Keep that one. Put your piston in facing up. And then we're going to lay out the, uh, the blocks that we're going to build our first circuit on. Okay, so this is temporary. You come out two. Right, break, break that one. It doesn't need to be there. And then you come two over and two back that way. Okay, this is where we're going to put our daylight sensor with a uh, with a repeater. I'm sorry, with a comparator in subtraction mode. That's really important. And then you're going to just run redstone here. Bam. Okay, now that's no good though because we don't want that because that will push that piston up the moment the sun is able to activate it uh, with a signal strength of four or more. So it will pretty much put that piston up immediately, which we don't want. So now, with that in place, you come over two, over two more, and then two this way. Now, I'm going to break this. You do want to do that. Don't, you know, make sure to break that because we're going to put our lectern in here with a, with a book. So we put our lectern in, a comparator, not in subtraction mode. We bring our signal over to that. And this is where we want to put in our book. Now you need a signal strength of 9. So here I'm just going to go to page 15. And you don't have to do anything other than just put a little bit of text there. Hit done. You're going to need two books. But I've only got one in my inventory. I took the other one out. And then you come in here and just turn it to page 9. And that will produce a signal strength of 9 coming out. Let me hit the button. Power 9, as you can see, which is exactly what we want. Feeding into that. Now, we can put that back. If you don't do that, every single time you change a page, this is going to pulse this redstone and trigger this up and down. And if you've already got your zombie in here, he can glitch out and end up standing on the piston with his feet in this glass block, and you don't want that. So make sure before you put this lectern down, break this, put the lectern down, put the book in, turn to page 9, and then put this put this redstone in. Okay, on to the second part of the circuit. So you're going to come over 4, and then one block from the end, you come over 2. This is where we're going to put our second lectern with the comparator. And in this case, we're going to put the book in there. We're going to put our book. Where's my book? Yeah. You're going to put your book in there with 15 pages. But you're going to turn this book to 13. Good old lucky 13. You're going to place your second of two daylight detectors there. Put your last comparator in. Make sure to switch that to subtraction mode. And then, oh, no, don't do that. You put one piece of redstone down there, and you put your repeater there. And that should be all that you need to do. So what this part of the circuit does is it ensures that when the sun is right above our heads, like it's when it's noon-ish, this will make this piston come back down so that he's not scaring the villagers so they can gather. They do gather around the bell, so that's why I have this in here. Um, and the last thing you need to do to get this to function is get your zombie in here. I have noticed where's the zombie, zombie, zombie there's a lot of zombies in this game okay I have noticed that even when you name these guys with a name tag they can sometimes despawn so what I did in my uh, my survival world is I, I found a guy in my mob farm that had already picked up uh, an item, which means they don't despawn. That way you don't need to have a tag either. And I put him in a boat and I let him sit there for several Minecraft days 
to make sure that he didn't despawn. That way, you know he won't disappear once you get him in here. Because it's a pain in the butt to get him in here. Uh, get him in here any way you can. I basically dropped him in from the top. I didn't have any water in here. I used a boat. Kind of walled him off. Pushed him into the area. Walled him off all the way around so he couldn't move anywhere. Broke the, the uh, boat out from underneath him. And he just fell down in here. Uh, so that's how I got him in there. I don't know how you want to get your guy in there. But, uh... Whatever way that works, that will work. Okay, guys, so that's the tutorial on how to build this. It works really well. I noticed that in my uh, survival skyblock world, I was getting closer to 100 ingots per hour, but I want to be conservative. I can guarantee you, you will get 75 per hour. Um, you know, again, the only really redeeming quality of this is the redstone is fairly inexpensive. The the daylight sensors and the comparators are about the most expensive part. Uh, it only takes one iron for the sticky piston. And all of this is really optional. It does increase the efficiency of the farm, but it's not mandatory. So you can put the majority of this up and get some iron, you know, to make your hoppers, uh, to make the piston, to do the rest of this stuff. And it doesn't rely solely on the uh, the panic effect and it's not taking full advantage of the panic effect I, I know that it could be way more efficient but this is what I came up with with the materials that I had in my skyblock world because I wanted to build a farm and I didn't see anybody else uh, putting out a tutorial at that time so I started working on this and this is what I come up with so I hope it's helpful and I hope you have a great day bye bye